Now we're going to learn about naming alkanes. For the moment, we're going to ignore this page because it needs to be revised. Um, it doesn't quite follow exactly what I want you to do. So we're going to write that on the next page. I'm going to be taking parts of this and reusing it, but I just want to revise the order. Let's look at the IUPAC naming of alkanes. First, I want to remind you that the names will be all one word. Because I'm writing them backwards, sometimes there will be spaces between the words. There is no actual space. I'm just not perfect at drawing them. Just know that there are not supposed to be spaces between the words and letters. The first step in all of our naming processes will be to find the functional group, which will identify the class of compound. In this case, our class of compound is alkane. There is no functional group, but since it's an alkane, the ending will be ane. The next step is finding the main chain. You want to find the main chain that includes any important functional groups. We have no functional groups, so we won't be including them. We want to find the longest continuous carbon chain in this case. I like to highlight the main chain so that I can easily see any substituents that are attached to that main chain. If the main chain is cyclical, we'll write the prefix cyclo just in front of the main chain's name. Next, we'll write down all of the substituents and identify them by name. Then we will put those in alphabetical order in front of the main chain's name. So what happens if I have more than one of the same group? In this case, if I have two of them, I would put di. If I have three, I'd put tri. If I had four, I'd put tetra. We can continue following that pattern, going up to 10 if need be, using the covalent naming system we've learned before. Now that we've placed all of our substituents in the name, we must number them. We need to tell the location of each of these substituents. The best way to do that is to number the carbon chain first in the forward direction, and then in the reverse direction. Notice that it's easiest to use two different colored pens to indicate which direction you're counting. Now figure out which number each substituent is attached to in the forward direction and total up that number. Then do the same for the reverse direction, counting which carbon each one is attached to and total that up. We can't use both directions in our name, we have to choose one. The way that we choose which one is the best direction to choose is by finding the lowest total number for the substituents. This is only true for alkanes. We will not see that for the rest of the functional groups. Now that we've determined which direction we're going to number the alkane in, we're going to find which position each alkane is on and write a number for every single substituent. Each substituent needs to have a number. If there are two or three of the same things, we'll put a comma between the numbers. Otherwise, between the number and the letter, there must be a dash. Those are the rules for naming alkanes. Obviously, this is not easy to remember without practicing. So now, let's do some practice. Let's start with compound A. Here we note that this is a hydrocarbon, has all single bonds, that makes this an alkane. The ending will be A-N-E for alkane. Next, we're going to look at the main chain. The main chain in this case has four carbons, so that is but. So this has become butane. Notice that we do have a branch. The branch is a one carbon branch. When we have one carbon, that means meth. It's attached to the main chain, so we put Y-L. This becomes methyl butane. Now we need to number it. Counting in the forward direction, one, two, three, four, and in the reverse direction, one, two, three, four, we see that in the forward direction, the methyl group is on carbon two. In the reverse direction, it's on carbon three. We choose the lower of the two numbers, and we find that this is now going to be two methyl butane. Now let's look at compound B. We notice that this is a hydrocarbon. It's all single bonds, so this is an alkane. The ending will be ane. Next, we look for the longest continuous carbon chain, and in this case, we have five, so that is a pentane. Notice that we have three substituents. Each one has one carbon. If it's one carbon, it's called meth. It's attached, so it becomes methyl. So we now have methyl pentane 
but because there are three of them, it becomes trimethylpentane. Now let's number it. Counting in the forward direction, one, two, three, four, five, and in the backward direction, one, two, three, four, five, we will see that in the forward direction, we have attachments on carbon number two, four, and four. We total those numbers and we find that we have 10. Now let's look at the reverse direction. We find the substituents are on two, two, and four. That is a total of eight. We're going to choose the reverse direction because eight is less than 10. So our answer is two comma two comma four dash trimethyl pentane. Now let's look at compound C. When we look at C, you'll notice that the structure is a little bit unusual. In this case, we've saved a little bit of space by not drawing in each of the hydrogen. This is not a correct drawing. It is neither a full structural formula nor a condensed structural formula. You will not be able to draw your answers in this form. I'm using it just to save some space so that we can still get some practice in. So let's look at it again. So first step. We find that it's a hydrocarbon because there's just hydrogen and carbon. We classify it as an alkane because they're all single bonds, which means that our ending is ane. Next, we look for our longest hydrocarbon chain. What number did you get? Did you get six, seven, eight? In this case, your answer should have been eight, which means we now have octane. We do have two branches on here. Each of those branches has two carbons. A two carbon branch is called ethyl. We have two of them, so we're going to write diethyl. So we now have diethyl octane. Now we need to number it. Counting in the forward direction and in the reverse direction. Now we want to figure out what number our substituents are on. In the forward direction, I see that the first ethyl group is on carbon four and the second one is on five. In the reverse direction, we see that the first one is on four and the second one is on five. In this case, it doesn't matter if you pick the forward or the reverse direction. The answer will still be four comma five dash diethyl octane. Looking at compound D, we can see that this is an alkane because it is a hydrocarbon with all single bonds. The ending will be ane. The next step is to find the longest continuous carbon chain. And in this case, you should find seven. For seven, we're gonna write hept. We now have heptane. So now let's do the substituents. I see that there are two substituents. One has one carbon, which we call methyl. The other one has three carbons, which is some type of propyl. We need to decide if this is regular propyl or isopropyl. Remember that iso means that it is attached on the middle of the three carbons. This one is attached to the middle one, so this will be isopropyl. Alphabetically, isopropyl comes before methyl, so our new name will be isopropyl. We're going to leave a little space for a number, then methyl, and then heptane. So isopropyl dash space dash methyl heptane. Okay, let's number it. Okay, we have our number in the forward direction and in the reverse direction. And now we're going to figure out where they are. So in the forward direction, the isopropyl is on number four and the methyl is on number five. So our numbers are four and five, which is a total of nine. In the reverse direction, we see that the methyl is on three and the isopropyl is on four. That is a total of seven. So we're going to choose the reverse direction. And our answer will be four dash isopropyl dash three dash methyl heptane. Let's look at compound E. One of the things to note immediately about compound E is that it is cyclic. We're gonna to have to remember to put cyclo in its name somewhere. But the first step is to identify the class of compound. So we can easily spot that we have a hydrocarbon and that they are all single bonded. So this is an alkane. The ending will be ane. 
Next, we count how many carbons are in the main chain. This one only has three, so that will be prop. So we have propane. Notice that it is cyclic, so that's why we're going to write in cyclo. We now have the name cyclopropane. And that is the complete name. But what would we do if I had changed one of those hydrogens to a fluorine? Let's try it. So now I would put on fluorocyclopropane, all still one word. I would just need to number where that fluorine is on. When you're counting around a ring, what is the, num the lowest number you could give this fluorine? Well, the lowest number you can give it is one because you can start wherever you choose. So this would become one fluorocyclopropane. In reality, we don't have to write the one because it is assumed number one. There is no other place it could start because the lowest number on the cyclo group will always be one, and if there's only one substituent, it must be on carbon number one. If I had changed a second one to a fluorine, I would now have to tell you where it was located. In this case, it would be com one comma two difluorocyclopropane. And if both of the fluorines had been on the same carbon, then we would have called it one comma one dash difluorocyclopropane. Finally, let's look at compound F. We know that this is not a hydrocarbon because there is a chlorine there. We call this a halogenated hydrocarbon, but the naming system stays basically the same. This is all single bonds between the carbons, so we call this an alkane. This would be a halogenated alkane. The ending will still be ane. We look for our longest carbon chain. We see that there are four, so this is a butane. Next, we look at our substituents. We have a chlorine group and we have a methyl group because it's one carbon. Alphabetically, chloro comes before methyl. So we write chloro, we leave a little space for the dashes and the numbers, then we write methyl butane. Now let's number it. For the numbering, you could go either very meticulous and write it in both directions, or you can look at it and see that you're going to be writing this in the reverse direction because both of the substituents are on that side. So looking at that, we're going to now pick our numbers. Chlorine is on position number two, and the substituent called methyl is also on number two. So our new name will be 2-chloro-2-methyl-butane.